y'all. This is Stacy with The Craft Room Diaries. Thanks for joining me for this little tutorial on making stickers and ephemera die cuts in design space. I wanted this little um, sticker that said, eat, drink, and be merry for this layout that I was working on. However, I didn't instantly find something, so I just went ahead and decided to make it myself. There are a number of ways to do this, but I'll just be showing you a couple of them that I use the most because they're quick and easy. You can make stickers or ephemera with just about any image from Cricut Access or one that you design yourself or even anything that you download from Google. Um, I'll show you the first one from Cricut Access. So what I did was I went ahead and searched. Like I said, I wanted something that said eat, drink, and be merry. So I searched just simply be merry and kind of scrolled through what was available until I found what I was looking for. So once I found the one that I wanted to use, I went ahead and just um, put that on my mat. Now, if, if you were to flatten this image at this point, it would print and cut each individual word and holly leaf. But if you want it to be a sticker, it needs a background. The background can be created by putting a shape behind it. For this one, a square or oblong circle would work. And this can be in any color you would like, but I chose white. From there, you can simply size it to the shape that's gonna fit behind the image. And then under arrange, choose send to back. That way it goes behind the image that you're creating the sticker with. And you can position it. What I did was I unlocked it so that I could actually uh, make it a little more of a um, an oblong circle instead of just a, a, a pure circle, just to make it fit a little bit better with this image. Once you have it positioned exactly the way you want it, on that background piece. You can then choose select all from the top. Some people drag down around it, but select all works the same way. And then you'll choose flatten. So now you can see that you've got a background on that image so that when you go to print, then cut it, it's gonna cut out that circle, that white circle with the, uh, the, the image is gonna print on that white circle to cut it out as a sticker. Now I'm gonna show you another option for doing, for creating a background that's a little more precise and actually fits with the image um, using Photoshop. Now I have a basic Photoshop subscription that I use for so many different things. So it's, it's worth me carrying that. I think it's like $9 a month for that. But doing this in Photoshop is actually really easy. Um, the first thing I do is I, I'm gonna put a background behind the image so that I have something to take a screenshot of. So I basically do it the same way. I put a square behind there. I'm gonna send it to the back. I want it to be white so that there's a nice contrast. And also make sure that you click off of the image so that you get rid of that little crosshairs that's in the middle. I'm then gonna take a screenshot of the image with the white background. If you were to take a screenshot without this white background, you would end up with all of the grid lines from your Cricut from the mat, okay? Now I'm gonna open up, go into Photoshop, and I'm gonna open this image by under new, go to open and it's gonna open up, it'll be the last thing on my desktop because that's where it saves automatically too. Once the image is open on my Photoshop mat, I'm gonna make sure that I have the Move tool selected before I do anything further. Um, from there, I'm gonna under Select, I'm gonna choose Color Range, okay? And what you'll see is that once Color Range is selected, it's going to, you can see it in the little black box, it's going to basically outline all of the parts of the image. So once that's done, I'm gonna choose OK. And then from there, I'm going to copy what I've just selected. So um, you can either use the commands or under edit, you can choose copy. So after I've copied it, I'm then gonna create a new layer um, and then paste this copied image onto the new layer. So again, you can use the commands or under edit, you can use paste. So here we're working in layer two. As you can see, layer two is, is highlighted. So I'm simply gonna double click on that little box in layer two, and then I'm gonna choose stroke. And what you'll see is that it automatically puts a shadow completely around and within the entire image, okay? You can change the size of that, and you can make that as big of a background or as small of a background as you would like. Once you've got it to the size that you'd like, we're gonna, in the layer style box, just select okay. And then we're gonna save this image as a JPEG 
So under file, you choose save as. Now once that, um, I now usually save these just directly on my computer and delete them after. But just make sure when you're saving it that you're saving it as a JPEG. You can also save it as a PNG. That works as well. But I'm gonna save that on my desktop. Next, I'm gonna go back to design space. And first thing I'm gonna do is just eliminate that box, that background box, because we won't be needing that anymore. Now I'm gonna upload the image that we just saved, the background image that we just saved from Photoshop. So you choose upload and then browse, and it should be the last thing that shows up in your um, in your saved desktop images, okay? Um, I'm gonna then select it as a simple image and choose next, and then I'm gonna eliminate, erase that background, which is gonna be everything except for the shaded image that we just saved. I'm then gonna save it as a cut image and choose it to use in my, in my project. So once it's on my mat, I'm gonna change the color, which again, you can change the color to whatever you choose. I'm gonna be using white for this. And then I'm gonna send it to the back and then resize it to fit the size of the image. Now you notice that as we're resizing this, it's not distorting the proportions of this background at all. It's gonna fit exactly with the image that we created the background for. And you can, we can make it a little bit bigger, but it's gonna stay in proportion. Once I've got it positioned, I'm gonna choose select all, and then just go on over and flatten that image which from there you can resize it to make it as big or as small of a sticker as you want. Um, and you can also make as many as, oftentimes I'll print two or three different sizes um, just because I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna use. I often do print multiples um, for my scrappy friend when we're scrapping together sometimes. So we'll choose make it and send this over to the printer. Um, when you send it to the printer, be, be sure to choose use system dialog box right here. Um, it's gonna give you the option of selecting where, however your printer, um, however your printer's dialog box comes up, but it's gonna give you the option of selecting the paper that you want to use. Mine is moving really, really slow. But um, if you're using sticker paper, I personally choose to use matte photo paper for most of the ephemera and stickers that I create, um, simply because I find it just prints so much sharper. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create a sticker or ephemera with an image from Google or pretty much anywhere else. So what I did is just search. I thought about doing a um, emoji mask. So I just searched for that in the search bar here. Do keep in mind licensing and copyright rules. Um, I'm not using any of this to sell. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're recreating anything um, that you just downloaded from Google. I found this little image that I liked and it looked like it was pretty clean and clear. So I saved it as a JPEG. Um, you could also save this as a PNG, but I, I, I generally use JPEG. It just really doesn't make any, that much of a difference. So it's gonna be saved to my desktop and then we're gonna go back over to Design Space and upload that. From my project mat, I'm gonna choose Upload and then Upload Image and then Browse. And of course, it should be the last thing that I saved on my desktop, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Um, now I'm gonna save it as a select the image type as a complex image, um, since it is a, a, a detailed image. Once it's in the upload department, I'm just gonna select and erase the white background so that I strictly have the image. And I'm now gonna save it as a print then cut image. And once it's uploaded, I'm gonna import that to my project mat. Now you can resize this to whatever size you want, and you could just go ahead and cut this as is. It would not have the nice little white rim around it, the nice little white background, but you could just cut this exactly as is. But if you want to put a white border around your sticker, it's gonna be done much the same way as we did the eat, drink, and be merry, okay? So we're gonna upload, and we're gonna go back and upload that same original image but this time we're going to save it as a simple image. We're gonna upload it as a simple image and we're gonna be saving it as a cut file only. So we're still gonna eliminate all the white background from that, um, from that download, but we're gonna save it as a cut image so that we're gonna have a nice 
contrast background to build our, um, our background with in Photoshop. I have seen other methods for doing this, but this route has always been the most consistent and quickest way to get a perfectly proportioned background. And once you've done it a few times, it's gonna be super quick. So I'm gonna do this same thing as previously and put a white square behind it, um, change it to white. I'm then gonna send it to the, send it to the back so that it's behind my image. And then again, be sure to click off of that so that you get rid of that, um, that little T in the center, the, uh, I forgot what that's called, but anyway, we're gonna take a screenshot of that to upload into Photoshop. So once in Photoshop, go to open and choose the image that you just created and open that in Photoshop. Once your image is open, we're gonna under select, and I'm gonna show you something a little different this time. Instead of using color range, we're gonna be using subject. It, in this case, it, it pretty much does the same thing. So it's going to put that little, um, it's gonna have selected it. You'll see the little dash lines. Now under edit, we're gonna choose copy again, and then we're gonna create a new layer. Once that new layer is open, you can also do that from the layer tab at the top. But once that new layer is open, we're gonna paste into that new layer, the image that we had just copied. We're now gonna double click on the box in that layer tab, and we're gonna choose stroke. And it's still set from the previous one again, you can adjust the size, the, um, the, the width of the, the background border that you wanna create just by moving the size bar, or you could also just change the number there. But once we've got it to the size we want, we're gonna choose okay. And then again, as before, we're gonna save as. Um, I just save everything to my computer, but you can either save this as a JPEG or a PNG. Next, I'm gonna upload the background that we just saved from Photoshop. Um, the same way that we've done all the previous ones, choose Upload, Browse, and of course, in this case, it's still the last thing that's saved on my desktop. I'm gonna upload this as a simple image, and once it opens in the Upload department, I'm going to just eliminate, erase that background so that I have just the image, and save it as a cut image. So choose your newly uploaded image and send that over to your project mat. Um, from here, I, I usually change the color first. Um, in this case, I'm changing it to white. And you can play around with your sizes and um, adjust the size of the, the sticker, the uh, image as well. And then with a range, you can send the sticker. In this case, I sent the sticker to the front instead of sending the background to the back, but it works either way. And once you have the image positioned on the background the way you want it, we're then gonna select all and flatten the image to create a print then cut image. Now you can still adjust the size. Um, you can also duplicate that to as many as you would like. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new even. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share it with a scrappy friend. And if you're a new visitor to my channel, please consider subscribing. I hope you visit the Craft Room Diaries again soon, and I hope you're having a happy, scrappy day.